Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fate Grand Order video. Today a little bit different. In the last summon video, someone who was a fan of Fate wanted help getting into some Fate Grand Order because every time he tried, he's a big fan of Fate, but he couldn't get into the game because he there was like too much to kind of go on or for for him. So I'm not the greatest player in Fate Grand Order. I have played a thousand hours of it, so at least I know what I'm doing for the most part. Um, so I figured I'd give some tips and tricks. A very simple, not really a guide, just kind of trying useful tips for beginners, basically. If you want to kind of get into Fate, Fate can seem kind of daunting, and to be honest, it really can be. A lot of people get lost in the in the grind of things, but if you follow me, maybe it'll make things a little bit easier. So that's going to be today's video, and if you end up liking it, please remember to leave a like. If there's still stuff that you don't 100% know about Fate, because I'm not going to be able to cover everything, please leave a question, and I'll either maybe make a video of it later on, or I'll just answer it yourself, or someone will answer it eventually. There's a lot of stuff in Fate, but I'm not going to go over all of it. Alright, so... I am going to very quickly just go over, so when you do a tutorial summon, um, you have a chance, you're always guaranteed one of these fours, in specifically the tutorial multi. You can't get a five in the tutorial multi at all. You can get multiple fours, but you can't get uh, a five at all. So you're really only pulling for one of these units. Uh, without getting into too much about it, um, Herc is considered the best unit to pull from it. And Steno is considered uh, the most niche. Some would say outright worse. I won't call her the worst. Uh, I don't like her personally, but there are plenty of people who um, find ways to use Steno, using her charm and stuff like that to kind of like charm lock an enemy. So it's really more that she's too niche for someone who just wants to start the game. Basically, if you want to start the game and have hard mode, you'd pick Sten you you get a Steno and don't reroll. Um, but the most important one is basically Herc, and then after him, uh, this is my own personal thing, I think I've seen plenty of other people, like, uh, put them in a different order, but it would go Emiya slash Nameless, and then it would be Tomcat, then it would be Camilla, then it would be Siegfried, and then it would be um, Elizabeth, and then it would be Marie, and then it would be Martha, and then it would be Dion, and then it would be, in the last place, it would be uh, Steno. And that's basically going from niche basically what you're going to end up needing the most out of everything um the reason herc ends up being the most loved is because he's a berserker and he really helps out a lot of newer players because he can kind of deal damage to everyone and he has a lot of good survivability in him all right so those are the basic ones another thing to kind another unit to kind of keep uh focus on is not my dog who's constantly barking in the background i can't stop him sorry about that um another unit to kind of keep an eye on is mash right here uh as you can see mine is a four star when you get mash she starts as a three star uh, she's silver plated um, make sure to level up her skills her skills are some of the best skills in the entire game I feel um, she has an incredible uh, invisible uh, uh, she has a skill that basically gives invincibility and increases MP charge by 20 which is a, which is really crazy her skill one eventually gets an upgrade where she gives a lot of defense and damage cut which is great for surviving and her skill 3 is a target that can target herself, and that really helps in a lot of challenging battles. If someone's about to use a Noble Phantasm on you, you can apply target focus on uh, MASH, and then you can use the wall to make her invincible if it's single target. If it's not single target, then you know, you'll figure that out too. She also has Lord Camelot, which also is very helpful for surviving hits. Um, and overall, a very good unit. Like, no one will really... And also, she has no real weakness. She doesn't really do damage to everyone. Uh, like some other classes, she doesn't really fit the traditional wheel, but she will, um, she will, like, kind of, like, deal neutral damage to all and takes neutral, da neutral damage from all. Alright. After that, when you start the game, uh, you'll be having to go through Singularities. These are Epic of Remnants, and then currently what I'm on, which is the higher level stuff, which is what a lot of people are going for, is Lost Belts. Let's focus only on singularities for now. Singularities, singularities are pretty easy up until Camelot. Camelot is where the game kind of takes a giant dive in quality in terms of actual difficult fights. This and the Camelot has maybe some of the toughest fights for people who are just starting out. A lot of people kind of got lucky with the fact that um, there were large breaks in between story chapters, so you had times to do events and kind of get your units stronger. A lot of newer players don't have that, so what you will have is 
potentially only really your friend system. And when you're choosing um, to go into battle, you'll choose friends. And if you see a message that says like, oh, uh, send a friend request, always send a friend request if they have it. Don't be afraid that you'll be denied because a lot of these dudes can help you a lot in a, a lot of early cases. Like for example, Waver is fantastic. Um, Waver, there's Merlin. Merlin is also great. The reason they're good is that they're casters that kind of have the these skills that charge your noble phantasms while also giving you benefit buffs. Like for example, Waver's gives an attack crease for three turns and gives 10% noble phantasm charge or NP. His shield right here in the middle gives 10% MP charge and gives a lot of defense to everyone. And his last one is a targetable one, increases their crit chance and gives 30 MP to someone. And you can see here, um, Merlin has a team wide shield that causes, uh, in you remember how I told you how MASH could protect you from one, one person gives one person invincibility. Merlin has the ability to give the entire team invincibility. And then his two other skills are extremely good that I just, it's hard to get into. Just understand, they're very good. Once you start using them, you'll understand. They're very good. Um, in terms of attacking units, you have um, um, Gene Alter, who's really used a whole bunch. You'll see a lot in your friends list. All right, but let's move on. Uh, Camelot's hard. How do you get your units stronger? So let me look into... This is actually kind of funny because I've actually already ascended every unit possible. Um, except for one because I just recently pulled her. So let me go down to her. There we go. Uh, so you can see here, these items right here require you to skill up. LA. Now the game has one way that is always a constant way to kind of get uh, skill material, and that is in the daily quests. Um, for example, here's the Lancer one, and depending on what day it is, it will change the class benefits of whichever one. So this one will kind of give you uh, Lancer statues, which you need to kind of help out with um, uh, ascending your units, and then also has some of these other stuff that, which various units, different units use different stuff and different material levels of it. Uh, gold, usually they don't use much. Silver, they use a decent amount, and bronze, they use a whole bunch of load, buttload of it. Um, so the game kind of like, when there's no event up, this is going to be kind of your best way of kind of grinding it. I always hate doing these events personally. Um, I only do them if I specifically, like when I'm starting out of a new case and I have no choice, then I'll do them. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description below for drop rates of what specific things go. Because the game doesn't tell you outright. You have to kind of just figure out where they drop. But the, thankfully there is a whole community of people that kind of help with that stuff. For example, the uh, Fake Grand Order re uh, Reddit has a... Um, a very useful uh, help thread that you can find a lot of the stuff that I usually use in there. And they basically compile it. Um, if you're kind of wary of not safe for work stuff, beware. Uh, a lot of the game is usually people talking about the characters they like, and Fate started as kind of a... Um, what's a polite way of saying hentai game? An Eero game? Something like that? There was a lot of sex, defenseless butts, stuff like that. I know that's not the right word, I just didn't want to say the right word. Um... You get my point. Uh, that's usually, so yeah, you'll want to grind these. And for EXP, you want to grind these. These are the best ones for grinding, specifically EXP stuff. Um, also, some interludes for units. I would actually not worry about interludes until you're more built up in, in case. Um, so let me look currently into this event here. These events are actually where I think a majority of your the best material for stuff you'll find. The reason is is that, um, for example, you're not going to be able to play this because some missions, uh, some missions, some events are cut off. For example, you need to beat Solomon in, in order to do Guda Guda Three. The next event that's coming up is going to be Summer, um, and Summer only requires you to beat Fuyuki, which is the very first singularity that you do, and it's the easiest one. Uh, so that should be easy enough to beat. And that's very good because, oh, hello, someone subscribed to me, Raiders fan. Oh, uh, if you're watching this, Raiders fan, thanks for the follow on Twitch. Follow me on Twitch too, I guess. Um, anyway, you can see here, um, you can get materials for specifically these drops right here that drop when you're doing the missions itself. So when you're doing um, event uh, quests, these drop and you use specific CEs to kind of increase it and then you exchange them for material. You can exchange them for material. Uh, and they have a lot of good stuff and this is usually the way I always get a bunch of material and these help a whole lot. If you're a new player, I would always make sure if you're an event, 
If you can't grind everything, specifically look for the material that you need for your units and grind that stuff. It doesn't matter if you don't have any CEs. Um, and craft, craft, craft essences uh, for these specific types of events. Usually there's a banner up and then you pull on them and these specific craft essences help with the drop increases. Um, it's not possible. Like usually also in the friends list, when you see new friends, usually friends will have craft, craft essences that help specifically with drops. So you don't have to worry. If you get a very good whale friend or something or someone who does a decent amount of, uh, of pulling on the game, for example, someone like me, I only pull on banners that are event related. Uh, some people pull on story banner. It's all up to you what you choose to play with the game. But I always like doing these because I like specifically being able to grind this out super fast. Um, because that's the thing, is that if you have no craft essences, then it takes a very long time. Uh, to just kind of show you what I mean, this should be able to show it off if I go in here. If I go in here and then I look up, I think it's under help? No, it's not under help. Let me exit out of that. Okay. It's a bad CE to show off. This one right here. You'll see he has increased amount of frog Netsune drop. So in this one, if I had none of these craft essences, it would be just a regular rate I would get them. But since I have four of them on here, it's a plus four. So I get plus four um, for every one drop I get, basically. I hope that makes sense. Um, so basically the best tip I always have for you is that when you're starting out, focus very clearly on the units that will help you out. So if you're re-rolling and you got Ma and you got uh, Herc, for example, focus on Herc. There's a lot of good, um, this game has a lot of good three CE, uh, three unit, three servants. Uh, I'm like Porky Pig in it. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, the um, let me see. It's got a lot of good three servants. For example, uh, let me see if I can find my dude here. He should be here somewhere. Uh, just to give off some of the good ones. Here he is. This guy right here, Kukulain, one of the best units in the game in general, and that's because he has an extremely good kit. If he's a three and you get him, I would suggest building him up. He's a very good one to start. The problem is, is that he does take four in hearts at a certain point, uh, and you might not have those, but don't worry about it, even without it. Even getting him at least as far as you can would be pretty helpful. Uh, some two ones that are super helpful. Uh, Spartacus is good for grinding. Um, William Shakespeare is good if you have if you need a caster that kind of like um, help you out in the beginning. I wouldn't suggest probably going for him right away just because I think it requires an interlude to unlock this skill three. Um, Hans is super well loved and super good. Uh, a lot of his stuff is very good. Uh, where's my boy? I know he's on. Oh, he's all up here. I grailed him so he's super high up. Arash is a two-star, and he's fantastic. Uh, his his specific reason he's so good is his Stella is an anti-army uh, noble phantasm. It kills him after using it, but it deals so much damage that it can basically wipe out an entire field of anything but Lancer units. So if you're doing one of those grind stages, and you have an Arash, and you give him um, a really good CE, for example, he's able to basically swi uh, wipe the entire yeah. field off. And now... There's so much to cover in this, and I'm trying not to make this the longest video possible. I will at least leave off with two final tips if you want to talk about really good craft essences, because craft essences can be really, really hard to kind of wrap your mind around when you're a new player. Let me go all the way down here. So here are the two main craft essences you will always see a whole bunch. Um, one is the imaginary element, and the other is the kaleidoscope. The reason why they're so good, kaleidoscope gives you 80% NP charge. Um, and he gives you 100% when it's max on limit broken. The only way to add max on limit broken is to feed it um, dupes. Um, if you do not have exactly five dupes, uh, four, four dupes, four dupes, meaning one original copy and then four other copies of Kaleidoscope, it's actually preferred that you treat each Kaleidoscope as its own separate entity because it's better that way. Because at that point, you're giving every unit on the team 80% MP charge. The other one is the imaginary element, which is like exactly like, um, let me see if I can, there it is. Uh, I have it max and limit broken, so it's 75%. I believe it not max and limit broken, it is 60%. So not as good, but still pretty good. 
And the reason that these CEs are so good is that it makes your Noble Phantasm start super charged up, which is super useful. Um, other than that, when you look at a Craft Essence and to decide which one is good, it's kind of basically what does the role of the unit. For example, um, uh, let me see if I can find a really good one that kind of gives my points. Um, there's a lot of them. Okay, this one right here. Uh, limited zero over, for example, increases the buster card effectiveness by 25%. Uh, that makes it so anything with a buster card will automatically be better by 25%. So someone like Bunyan, for example, we can look down here. She has three buster cards and her noble phantasm is buster. That means she would actually be greatly benefited by by that specific CE. So look, let's look at Nero. She only has two Buster cards. All right, not bad. She could still kind of make use of it, but you could see there that she's actually more arts focused. So you'd want to give her something more arts related. And then we have um, uh, Saber Rider Maid, Rider Summer version. <laughs> uh, she would not be make much use of that CE because she only has one Buster card. Her Noble Phantasm is quick. So in no way would that, if she had that CE, it would basically be a waste on her. So that's kind of how you determine whether or not a craft essence will be good for a unit, uh, is by kind of looking at them and seeing, does this actually benefit the unit in any way? And some cards like Kaleidoscope and the Imaginary Element just benefit everyone in general. They don't benefit everyone because there are specific units that start with their Noble Phantasm super crazy charged. For example, Sanzong. There's a caster who has the ability of basically charging her Noble Phantasm by like 80% at skill 10 of her skills. Um, that's crazy. She doesn't need Kaleidoscope and stuff like that. Uh, Waver doesn't need Kaleidoscope, things like that. Um, and here's a final tip for this one specifically because I just remembered it. No, I didn't. I just forgot. One moment as I try and remember my tip. Okay, I remembered it. Don't worry about upping the skill of units until after you have a decent team. A lot of pe it requires a lot of QP, um, and it requires a lot of farming for it, which can be very tough for a new player. So I would suggest not worrying about it till you're actually kind of built up. And you can actually farm QP over here. This is always available, the, the vault. Another thing to look out for, there's a specific event and it's coming up after summer. Um, it's usually called Nero Fest. This year it's called Gil Fest because Gilgamesh will be the front of it. Um, it's a lotto st style of uh, event. And lotto events are great because they can be grinded. They can be... You can grind them infinitely. And that's the best way of getting a buttload of QP and a lot of good starting material. When we kind of get close to Nero Fest, I will try and make a video trying to say like, hey, lotto grind. And this is the reason why you should lotto grind. But kind of know that going ahead. So yeah, that's kind of it. Um, a very basic kind of guide, very basic tips, I think. Um, I hope that helped in some way. It can be really hard to kind of start fate, I understand. Um, uh, it's, it requires a lot of time, but once you're kind of built up, once you're kind of like in my essence, once you kind of play the game like I do, which is basically how do I three turn everything with the specific units I have, you'll be in a much better place. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. Um, if I didn't fully under, under explain something or you need some more help, make sure to leave a comment. I will be going to sleep the second I upload this video, so if it takes me a while to answer your questions, forgive me. Uh, that's the end of today's video, and I hope you liked it, and I'll see you next time. And if you're wondering where's the Dragalia stuff, is not doing anything. So until next time, everyone, enjoy your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.